Hello everyone and welcome to Ask My Tablet, the show where you send in the questions and I ask my tablet. Get it the right way there. <laughs> so, hope everybody's doing good today. Get your questions in the comments for the next Ask My Tablet. I already have a few for the next uh, that Joy gave me, so I got two towards the next one. So, when we get around 20, that's enough to do uh, the show. So, anyway, thanks for all the questions everybody. Um, and let's get started. Oh yeah, by the way, there's Kitty back there. She's eating. She was, when I sat down, she had eaten some dry food, and then I sat down here, she was all going back and forth underneath the chair, around my legs, all around meow, meow. I said, do you want some uh, tuna? And she just started meowing like crazy. So this is what uh, she had, she's just had. I guess she's finished now. You finished? Did you eat it all? This has uh, not quite as much in it as it used to be. They made them just a little bit smaller, but uh, she really likes these. But she doesn't like the scallop. You go figure. Uh, the plain tuna one, she doesn't like as good as this one. Uh, the scallop must season it or something, but she doesn't want to eat the scallop, so I have to throw it away. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's really funny. Hey, aren't you, honey? Yeah, she's happy now. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if she's had time to eat all of this. She'll go back and eat it a little bit, uh, you know, later on. She'll take a nap after eating all that, I'm sure. <laughs> that's, that's what she does. She eats and takes a nap. I try to get her to play with her, you know, get her to stay awake long enough to play with her, you know, with her toys and stuff. But she's she's ready for a nap, I'm sure, anytime. She's still sitting there. She'll probably lay down here right beside me. Okay, uh, here's our first question. It comes from Crystal's Pets and Plants. Alexa, what is the most popular spider? From bushcraftpro.com. The Ooh. black widow spider, a member of the Latrodectus genus, is one of the most well-known spiders globally, recognized by the hourglass-shaped red mark on its abdomen. I don't think that's a black widow. And actually, I have... Uh, I have killed s several here, you know, and they're, they're exactly like it said, the eyeglass, the, uh, no eyeglass, hourglass shape, uh, Mark, yeah, uh, several times, and actually I was close to one, I mean, I was working, uh, but I think I had gloves on, um, I need to wear gloves more, my leather ones out there, because they could be, you know, I could be messing around pulling weeds or something, and one of them be in there or something, but, um, yeah, I can't remember. Probably, I probably have found about four of them over the years here. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, there's three here from uh, Joy, my wife Joy. Uh, Alexa, what is the tallest building in New York City? The tallest self-supporting structure in New York. New York is the One World Trade Center, which is 1,776 feet tall. Okay, followed by 432 Park Avenue at 1,400 feet, the Empire State Building at 1,250 feet, Bank of America Tower 1,200 feet, and Three World Trade Center 1,080 feet. Okay, so. Okay, Alexa, how long was the longest whale? longest whale is a blue whale whose average length is 90 feet 2 inches. Well, so there, she, I think she more meant like what was the record for the longest whale. I don't know if... But anyway, a blue whale, 90 feet 2 inches. North Pacific right whale, 50 feet 11. A fin whale, 50 feet. A bowhead whale, 49 feet 2 inches. A North Atlantic right whale, 49 feet, 2 inches. Let's see, just out of curiosity, if she'll do like a, what's the world record for the longest whale? Alexa, what's the world's record for the longest whale? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, the longest whale well. species in the world is the blue whale, with the longest on record measuring 33.58 meters, oh. or 110 feet and 7 inches long. Wow, okay, so that is the, the um, longest one then. Hmm, 
Okay, that's that's 110 feet. Wow. Okay, I'm glad I got the right answer for you, Joy. Uh, Alexa, what is the most famous fast food restaurant? I found a few fast food restaurants. Pals, she just found them. Miles away on North State of Franklin Road. Pals is guys, one and a half miles away. away. On North Road Street, Unit Five guys too expensive. Jangles. 1.7 miles away on West Mount Castle Breakfast. Drive. You can ask me for things like, what's the phone number for the first one? <laughs> no thanks. Then there's <coughs> Petro's, Jersey Mike's, KFC. KFC should be actually further than Jersey Mike's. I don't know where they're getting their uh, mileage from or whatever. Uh, and Chick-fil-A. <coughs> but we wanted to know the most famous um, fast food restaurant. How about popular, most popular? Alexa, what is the most popular fast food restaurant? I found a few top rated fast food restaurants. She's doing the same thing. Pals, I don't know why she went. Miles away on yeah. North okay, State sorry about Road. that one. Five guys, okay, stop. Three miles away on North Rome Street, Unit Alexa, stop. <laughs> oh. Okay, she just won't, she's picking up this restaurant, you know, probably. I don't know why she's not doing the most what I asked. So anyway, she does that sometimes, and I can't keep wording it over and over a different way. She'd probably say the same thing. Uh, here's one from Logan. Uh, Alexa, what's the most popular flower? Here is what I found from reference.com. The rose is the most popular flower in the world with tulips and lilies following close behind. Other popular flowers include poinsettias, carnations, and irises. Uh, you know, uh, I, I never, I mean, I like poinsettias, but, um, you know, I, I just never did uh, want them. You know, I, I, maybe it's because I used to deliver uh, for a florist and we also uh, worked on pool tables. Like if someone moved and wanted one set up or, or if someone wanted one recovered or if it was damaged in some way, uh, that's where I made my real money. But I delivered, uh, also delivered uh, flowers and stuff, plants. And so around the holidays, naturally, I mean, there, we, we delivered hundreds and hundreds of poinsettias. Oh my gosh, I, I got to where I couldn't stand them. Oh, I mean, <laughs> because I was going... You know, this was a Christmas time was just uh, around anywhere from uh, Thanksgiving through Christmas with the delivery of plants and flowers. It's crazy. I'd come in, I don't know, uh, probably before uh, about nine, maybe, or something like that, because they didn't want us real early at people's houses, banging on the door or ringing the bell. Uh, but I would work until 10. 10 o'clock at night, and it was awful trying to deliver uh, in the dark, because most, a lot of people didn't have any lights on, so you couldn't see the addresses, and people are behind you, and you're trying to look for addresses, you know, and try to find one, you know, it's, it's crazy, crazy, uh, I didn't like it, <laughs> okay, uh, so, these next one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe, came from uh, Vicky G's. Thank you very much. Uh, Alexa, who invented popsicles? As far back as 1872, two men, doing business as Ross and Robbins, sold a frozen fruit confection on a stick, which they called the Hokey Pokey. Francis William Frank Epperson of Oakland, California, popularized ice pops after patenting the concept of frozen ice on a stick in 1923. Okay, it's pretty neat. All right. Alexa, what phrase was first printed on paper money? Hmm, I don't know that. She doesn't know that. Hmm, and I don't know exactly how to... Uh, what saying? I don't know. But I'll try that and just see. Uh, Alexa, what saying was on the first printed paper money? From 
npr.org. The first paper money is basically a warning, saying, don't counterfeit paper money. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't know if that's exactly what it said on it, but uh, the first paper money is basically a warning, saying, don't counterfeit paper money. Okay, I don't know if that's what you were looking for or not. Uh, Alexa, who was Bessie Coleman? Bessie Coleman was an early American civil aviator. She was the first African-American woman and first self-identified Native American to hold a pilot license and is the earliest known black person to earn an international pilot's license. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. All right. Um, okay, Alexa. I know, I actually know this. Uh, stop. Okay. Uh... Alexa, what famous actor had a mob killer for hire for a father? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Charles Boyd Harrelson, the father of actor Woody Harrelson, was an American freelance hitman connected with organized crime. He was convicted of assassinating U.S. District Judge John H. Wood Jr. Yeah. I saw, um, I don't think it was like a biography. I don't know, remember what show it was on, but I, maybe it was a video. Maybe it was a video on YouTube that I saw about it. But I did see something about that, so I knew this. His estimated net worth is $70 million. Not bad, huh? He was born in 7-23-1961, and he's 5 foot 9 inches. I thought he was a little taller than that. Obviously not. Okay, uh, Alexa, what country has the highest number of internet users? From OneDropolis.org, the country with the most internet users is China with over 640 million users. You know, that's, that's, that's interesting, but I wonder what the internet is like over there. Because they, I'm sure they, um, they probably don't let people see a lot of things. I would think, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I, I just imagine it wouldn't be the same, exact same as it is here. Uh, anyway, Alexa, where can the world's smallest wildcat be found? Here is an answer oh, no, from an picture. Alexa Answers no contributor picture. that I translated. The world's smallest cat species lives in the rainforests of India and Sri Lanka, the rusty cat. Fully grown specimens weigh just under a kilogram and can still fit on the palm of one hand. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, we got uh, all but the last one now is from, uh, came from YC Cooks and Bakes. Thank you very much, YC. Check her channel out. Uh, Okay, Alexa, do all types of salt contain important iodine and vitamin K? From everydayhealth.com, some specialty salts, such as sea salt and kosher salt, usually don't contain iodine. Yeah, and it, it just makes, it makes me wonder, I mean, um, so I'm wondering what types of salt that these companies use when they put it in their products. Does it, is it the one with iodine and vitamin K? You would think. But I, I also wonder if you always use, now we use, um, well here's one, I don't, the top's laying here somewhere. This one, I'm not sure where we got, the, I think we got this one actually from uh, uh, big lots, but you can see, you know, it's a grinder, it's a sea salt grinder, and it doesn't say ingredients sea salt, no iodine. And let's see, here's one. Where, where's the other one I was looking at? Right here. Okay, here's one from Dollar Tree. This is Himalayan pink salt ingredients himalayan pink salt but my question it, uh, that i'm getting to is 
if you always eat uh, use kosher salt and uh, sea salt and everything that doesn't have iodine are you going to be deficient in iodine and vitamin k is that that but i don't know how important that is you know the iodine thing here's one we got to get another one uh joy likes this one really good from uh aldi it just we just ran out there's barely anything left but yeah I, i'm just curious i was curious about that um it makes me want to ask her almost how important is iodine and vitamin k in the diet alexa how important is iodine and vitamin K in a person's diet? From VeryWellHealth.com Vitamin K plays an essential role in bone metabolism alongside calcium and vitamin D. Some studies have linked higher vitamin K That's intakes with greater iodine. bone density. Alexa, is iodine important in your nutrition? Here's something I found on InfoWarsStore.com. Iodine is an essential mineral that supports thyroid health and well-being for the body. Atomic number 53, you're discovered 1811. Okay, I just, you know, went a little off side trip there. Okay, Alexa, which type of salt is the most healthy for humans? Sorry, I missed the rest of that question. I didn't read it. it. said table salt, sea salt, or Himalayan. But it's obviously Himalayan, and, and I'd heard that too, so that's why I had got this. So I don't know if I, you can always find this one at uh, Dollar Tree. That's their thing, but I noticed I got this at Grocery Outlet for a dollar. So uh, I don't know. You might be still be able to find it at Dollar Tree. That's the one I mainly use. Himalayan and it says it's good for you but also it sounds like iodine is something you need too uh, so maybe people they use it when they make stuff uh, Alexa do you have a favorite scary movie good afternoon Michael I thought the ring was terrifying those poor people having to wait seven days for something the least the killer could have done was offer a two-day option <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she likes the ring. Uh, Alexa, people have called baby raccoons kits or cubs, so what is the correct name for a baby raccoon? This might answer your question. A young raccoon is called a cub or a kit. So it's still either one. Kit cub. Cub kit. <laughs> Okay, uh, Alexa, if weed control or fertilizer was used on a lawn, is it safe to add the grass clippings to a mulch pile? Yes, it is generally safe to add grass clippings from a lawn that has been properly fertilized to a mulch pile, as long as the fertilizer was not pesticides. However, it is always a good idea to check for any local... Or well... She got uh, cut off there somehow. Okay. So it is safe, she said, though. Alexa, how can tomatoes be stored so they don't ripen too quickly? Tomatoes can be stored so that they do not ripen too quickly by placing them in the refrigerator. This process can be used to prevent further ripening and avoid spoilage. It is important to note that if tomatoes are left out at room temperature, they may ripen too quickly and become spoiled. By storing tomatoes in the refrigerator, you can maintain their freshness and flavor for longer. You know, I've, I've heard some conflicting things about that before. Maybe in the winter it would be a more, you know, if it was cooler in your house, maybe it would be more likely to keep them out. But, I don't know, I... I once we cut a tomato, if there's like half of it left or whatever, you know, we'll wrap it up in some foil or put it in a baggie and put it in the fridge. But you know what? I had a tomato that was, I, I guess it was a little ripe when I got it, or you know how they are, the tomatoes are horrible right now. And I had one and I cut it 
and it felt soft, you know, it had already started to germinate. The seeds had started to germinate inside. Of course, I threw it away. I threw it in the compost, but it'll probably grow some in the compost. I don't know. But anyway, it's, so so I guess it is okay to put them in the fridge. I, I heard uh, something different before. Uh, but anyway, okay. Alexa, why are there alligators on the beaches of South Carolina this year? Not sure about that one. Uh, Alexa, what makes the inside of an iceberg head of lettuce turn brown? The inner layers of an iceberg head of lettuce turn brown due to a chemical reaction that occurs when the lettuce is exposed to oxygen. This reaction, which is similar to what happens when cut potatoes turn brown, results in the development of a pigment called chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is responsible for the green color of the lettuce, and when it is exposed to oxygen, it changes color to brown. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Alexa, why don't you answer political questions? <laughs> did you hear that? Did, did you hear that a different sound? It went, Dun -dun. like that. She's not even going to answer that. I'll ask her again. I don't think she'd get mad about it. Alexa, why don't you answer political questions? Hear that? <laughs> Just the word political, I guess, uh, is enough to shut her down. I mean, I don't know. Oh, okay. Alexa, are there any homes in Florida that have basements? From HealingPicks.com. Florida homes are rarely built with basements. And you know, here, every, every, pretty much every home, I'd say, has them. And you know, they're a pain, really, if you don't really use it for uh, much of anything, because, like, uh, well, of course, that's where a hot water heater one year, many years ago, uh, it, it messed up. It, it blew, didn't blow up. I mean, it just quit working right, and then it flooded, flooded our basement. And it's been horrible. It was horrible. I made to get to. <laughs> okay, Alexa, what is turning the fresh water supply in South Carolina and Georgia yellow and orange? I found a fisherman's dock, Orange Park. What? Fisherman's dock, Orange Park is 426.7 miles away <laughs> on 730 Park Avenue in Orange Park. It is open until later today at 6 p.m. That's all you all you got out of it was orange. I'll try again. Alexa, what's turning the fresh water supply in South Carolina and Georgia different colors? From drinkoptimum.com. Water coloration can signal different potential issues, including the presence of sediment, rust, or dissolved minerals. Ooh. Okay. I don't know if I drink that or not then. Uh, well, I see. And here's one from Tom. Uh, Alexa, why are robin eggs blue? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, the blue color of a robin's eggs is due to biliverdin, a pigment deposited on the eggshell when the female lays the eggs. There is evidence that higher biliverdin levels indicate a healthier female and brighter blue eggs. Hmm. Okay. How about uh, Alexa? Sing me a song. I'd love to tackle this one. Hut, hut, hike. Running down the field, going quick as he can. Got the football cradled and the game in his hands. Dodges a defender with a stiff arm and a glance. Now he's got a clear path and a real good chance to score a touchdown. Be the hero of the day to all the fans in the stand. We'll be cheering his head to score a touchdown. Get up and cheer him on. I like that. I played a lot of football up to high school, but then I got injured and I had to have an operation on my wrist. Wasn't able to play, wasn't able to lift weights. That wrist messed up. Okay, let's do a couple jokes. We're running a little long, but you know, this is, this is fun. Let's have some fun. Alexa, tell me a joke. 
dating or stop dating the sloth. He never made a move. <laughs> oh, Alexa, tell me a joke. What do you get when you cross a banana with geometry? A slippery slope. <laughs> I like that first one the best. All right, everybody. That's it today for Ask My Tablet. Get them questions in the comments for the next one. And I appreciate everybody that sent the questions in. And I hope you had fun today and learned a few things and exercised your mind. Uh, and everybody, we'll have another one as soon as we get all the questions together. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great day and God bless.